We are back in the Word. Yes, we are. Yeah. And today we're going to shift. Today we're going to talk about how pork is not food. Everybody say that with me. Pork. 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 Is not food. It's not food. Pork isn't food. And man, many people do not understand this. Let's start off in Leviticus 7 and 8. Y'all go ahead and go there in your Bibles. But Christians, they will ignore clear commandments, clear instructions on what they can eat and what they cannot eat to find some type of scripture that's wishwashy. The context ain't talking about what they can't eat. And cannot eat. And they'll justify their sin of eating pork in that scripture. They do that a lot with Paul's writings and with the Gospels. And so, let's go to Leviticus 11 and 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof. And be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. That is clear, that is direct. Let's go to Deuteronomy 14 and 8. Because God gave us two chapters that is the dietary law. Specifically telling us what we can and cannot eat. The subject is what we can eat and what we cannot eat. Not Cornelius being converted. Not eating with unwashed hands. These topics are on what we can and cannot eat. Deuteronomy 14 and 8. And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet you have not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. That's simple and plain, ain't it, y'all? Mm -hmm. That's very simple and very plain. Plain. Now let's go to the scriptures they use to justify eating pork. This is going to be Acts chapter 10. And let's start off in verse 11. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners. And let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth. And wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him. Rise Peter kill and eat. But Peter said not so Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. So this is where most of the Christians justify eating anything they want. Particularly pork. But let's go to verse 28. And we will see that this is talking about the Gentiles. This was Peter's first mission to a Gentile. And he said unto them, You know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me 
that I should not call any man common or unclean. Now, we have to go back to verse 15. Did God say anything about a man in verse 15? No. He didn't. He didn't say anything about a man. So when we go back to verse 28, we see that Peter, he understood the vision. That this vision was speaking of Cornelius being converted. Okay, Cornelius was a northern kingdom Israelite. And this man was unclean. And the Jews and the Samaritans had no dealings. We can see that in John 4. The woman said, why are you asking me for water? You know the Jews don't deal with the Samaritans. So there was this strife in between these two nations. And this was simply talking about unclean Gentiles. Not food. And that's why... Peter says God showed him that he should not call any man common or unclean. Now let's go to Mark 7 and 15. Because this is another famous scripture from the New Testament that the Christians use to justify eating pork and everything else. I even had a Christian tell me that if I was on an island and that if there was nothing else to eat, I could eat a human being and God would have mercy on me. Come on, man. Why do we even think like that? Why wouldn't you just eat the grass? Why is you trying to justify eating things that God tells us not to eat? Verse 15. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought, purging all meats? And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. So, what we want to do is, we want to understand, what does he mean by defile? So, let's go to Leviticus 11 and 43. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean that you should be defiled thereby. So we know that food that is unlawful can defile you. So what these Christians are doing is they're going to Mark chapter 7 and they're saying, Jesus gave us a new law and he tells us that it's not what goes in your body that defiles you. But it's what comes out of your heart that defiles you. So we have to understand, was Jesus talking about food or was he talking about germs? Was he talking about meat or was he talking about eating with unwashed hands? Let's see who knows. What was he talking about? Not washing your hands. Eating without washing your hands. That's the context, okay? Because we just read in Leviticus 43 that unclean food can defile you. Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 11.44 For I am the Lord your God 
You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So right here, we know that unclean animals, if you eat it, will defile you. Now let's go to Daniel 1 and 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. So this means that the king at that time in Babylon was eating food that the dietary law did not approve of. And Daniel was like, man, I'm not finna eat this. So now we know that in Mark chapter 7, the context is not about eating food. The context is about eating with unwashed hands. Because if you just look at this passage and, and come to the conclusion in verse 15 that nothing that goes into a man can defile him, does that mean you can eat a stonefish? No, that will kill you. Does that mean you can eat a giant bullfrog? No. That will kill you. Does that mean you can eat rotten cheese? No. That can kill you. There are some things that if you eat it, it can kill you. Does that mean you can eat antifreeze? No. Okay. He is speaking of the germs from unwashed hands. So now what we want to do is we want to go to some stories in the Bible how these people were forced to eat pig and they chose rather to die gloriously than to commit the abomination. This is going to be 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and what we want to do is go down to Eleazar. This is going to be verse 18. Eleazar one of the principal scribes, an aged man, and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. Constrained means forced. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth. And came of his own accord to the torment. As it behooved them to come. That are resolute to stand out against such things. As are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. But they that had the charge of that wicked feast. For the old acquaintance they had with the man taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, such as was lawful for him to use, and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. So they gave him an option to eat food that was lawful and to make it look like it was pork. That in doing so, he might be delivered from death and for the old friendship with them find favor. So they would befriend him. That's going into financial gain, uh, favor with man, being exalted. But let's see what he does in verse 23. But he began to consider discreetly. And as became his age and the excellency of his ancient years, and the honor of his gray head, whereon was come, and his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by God. Therefore he answered accordingly, and willed them straight ways to send him to the grave. He said, you know what? Dig me a grave. I would rather die than eat that pork. For it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise to disassemble 
whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being four score years old and ten, okay, so this man was 90 years old, were now going to be a strange religion. So think about that, y'all. Christianity is a strange religion. Why? Because Christianity permits the eating of pork. So he was an old man and he had young ones looking up to him. And he didn't want those young ones looking up to him, seeing him slip and fall, do a Humpty Dumpty, and go into something strange, a strange religion. Verse 25, and so they through mine hypocrisy and desire to live a little time and a moment longer should be deceived by me and I get a stain to mine old age and make it abominable. For though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Wherefore now, manfully changing this life, I will show myself such and one as my age requireth. He said, you know what? I'm going to be a grown up. I know better. I know I ain't supposed to be eating this pork. Just like this nation, America knows, okay, but they know there's a whole lot of money because people go by the taste. And bacon, let me tell you something, everything that comes out of the pork is delicious to man. And man makes a lot of money with the pork. That's why there's a dollar sign on the piggy. You can do a whole lot with pork. And leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws that the Christians threw in the trash. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. So Eleazar was the influence of the seven boys that would that were tortured because they would not eat the meat. He was their role model, Eleazar, and the mom, okay? They that led him changing the good, will they bear him a little before into hatred because the foresaid speeches proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, It is manifest unto the Lord that have the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains and body be. I now endure sore pains in body by being beaten but in soul and well content to suffer these things because I fear him that is the almighty. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. Now, think about it. Who is pushing the pig? That's the nation of Edom. We just got to be honest. The Muslims ain't teaching us to eat pork. The Arabs ain't teaching us to eat pork. The Israelis ain't teaching us to eat pork. Okay? It's Edom. Now, in this time, it was the Greeks. And these Greeks were white because they conquered the real black Greeks which were the seed of Japheth. So these are the Romans, okay? They are the seed of Edom. They are trying to make the Israelites eat pork. Okay? Now we want to go to the seven sons, okay, with their mother. This is going to be 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 1. It came to pass also that seven brethren 
with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. But one of them that spake first said thus, What wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die. Rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Wouldn't it be nice to be around a bunch of people like that today? Today this is like one in a million. You're not going to be around a bunch of people like this. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons, that's pots, to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him, being yet alive, to be brought to the fire, and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, The Lord God look up upon us, and in truth have comforted us, as Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declared, saying, and he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this number, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with his hair, they asked him, Will thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? Now, these were the Greeks. And let's just be straight up. These were white folks, okay? They did this to this man. But he answered in his own language and said, No, wherefore he also received the next torment in order as the former did. So all of the brothers were tortured, okay? And killed for not eating pork. But let's fast forward and let's go to the last son. Okay, this is going to be verse, let's start at verse 14. So when he was ready to die, he said, thus it is good being put to death by men to look for hope from God to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men, thou art corruptible, thou doest what thou wilt, yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God, but abide a while, and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. After him also they brought the six, who being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause. For we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our God. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. But think not thou that take us in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunishment. Now, here's the one I wanted. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day, she buried with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how you came into my womb. For I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. 
Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised, and suspected it to be a reproachful speech, whilst the youngest was yet a lie, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man, if he would turn from the laws of his fathers, and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with his affairs. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this matter. Oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee such three years and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein, and consider that God made them of things that were not. And so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor, but be worthy of thy brother. Take thy death, that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brother. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. Now that is so deep because I think about Jesus, that last son to die. In the last day when he will die, just to keep the law of Moses. And the law of Moses was, the son shall not die for the fathers, and the fathers shall not die for the sons. But every man shall die for his own sin. Verse 31, And thou that hast been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of God, for we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of God. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of Almighty God who seeth all things. For our brethren who now have suffered a short pain are dead under God's covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of God, shalt receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers beseeching God that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation and that thou by torments and plagues mayest confess that he alone is God and that in me and my brother the wrath of the almighty which is justly brought upon our nation may cease then the king being in a rage handed him worse than all the rest and took it grievously that he was mocked. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts and the extreme tortures. Now, think about that. These people chose to put God's laws first. And what's amazing is a lot of people do not know these stories in the Apocrypha. Okay? They haven't read the Apocrypha. But when I read this for the first time, I hated I ever ate pork. I absolutely hated I ever even tasted it. Seeing what these men went through. 
for God's laws. Now, what we want to do is we want to prove how there were clean animals and unclean animals in the book of Genesis. Okay? And there's going to be clean and unclean animals all the way to the book of Revelation. So the Christians have no excuse because if they say that Peter's vision of God saying eat what God has cleansed and everything is clean now, why is there unclean birds in the book of Revelation? Answer that, Christians. I thought God cleansed everything and everything is not to be refused, but long as you pray for it, you can eat it. Why is there unclean animals in the book of Revelation? And we will get that next. Let's go to Genesis 7 and 2. Of every clean beast, even in the book of Genesis, before the law of Moses, they had knowledge of what was clean and unclean. Genesis 7 and 8. Of clean beasts. Genesis 8, 20. And Noah built an altar unto, and Noah built it an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, that's a bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So even in the book of Genesis, y'all, this is the, the seventh chapter, right in the beginning, they knew what was clean and what was not clean. Now what we want to do is go to Revelation chapter 18, and let's go to verse 2. So I can shock some Christians. This is going to be Revelation chapter 18 verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Is fallen. And is become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit. And a cage of every unclean. Whoa. Unclean and hateful bird. Why are these birds still unclean? Don't you know there's birds that is still unclean? God gave us commandments. He gave us a list of animals that are clean and unclean. We can't eat an eagle. That is unclean. Okay, there's many birds that we still cannot eat. And here is the proof the Christians is lying. Because right here in Revelation 18 to make sure y'all got this written down. There's still unclean birds. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go to some judgments. A lot of Christians fail to realize that God promised to punish Christians for eating pork. Isaiah 66 and 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist, behind that cross, thinking you can do whatever, thinking you can eat whatever, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse. You can't eat no mice. No. That's unclean. Shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Now let's see what consumed mean. This is going to be... Let's read another translation. This is going to be... I believe this is the NET version. As for those who consecrate and ritually purify themselves so they can follow their leader and worship in the sacred orchids, those who eat the flesh of pigs and other disgusting creatures like mice, they will all be destroyed together, says the Lord. So God has a futuristic prophecy. Of destroying people. That's what consumed me. 
Let's go to another translation. This is going to be the World English Bible. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens, following one in the middle, eating pig's meat, abominable things, and the mouse, they shall come to an end together. Okay, so God has promised to destroy all those who are eating the pig. Now, for some reason, man, God hates when we eat the pig. Think about it. Jesus never killed nobody, but he killed pigs. And according to the Hadith, Jesus will come back and he will destroy the cross. And the second thing he will kill is the pigs. Wow. Okay. Now, this is the Bible. That's in your Bible. The story of Jesus drowning the pigs. Okay. It's in the Bible. He didn't say, hey, hey, let's make some pork chops. Everything is lawful. No. Those are the Christians, man. I learned that a Christian will look through the Bible and they want to do evil anyway. But they'll find a scripture that will justify their sin. Same thing with tattoos. They'll say, oh, oh, that's the Old Testament. Okay. The Bible says God is not a man. They'll say, oh, oh, that's the Old Testament. Jesus is God. They will ignore the truth to go with the lie. Okay, I don't even care if the apostate Paul told me I could eat pork chops. I'll be like, hold on. That's a contradiction in the Bible. Because not only did God tell us not to eat it, he also told us that in the future he will punish us for eating it. So I wouldn't even take that chance. I encourage you Christians to stop being nasty. Pigs are nasty. They eat anything. Back in the day, they ate feces. They would eat through a wire gate. Okay? They have no sweat glands. They are nasty and you know it. Okay? And we know for a fact they are like trash compactors. Okay? They're like a garbage disposal. They're nasty. God doesn't want us to eat that. Okay? And that's in Leviticus 11. That's in Deuteronomy 14. God has two chapters in the law of Moses. Dealing with what we can eat and what we cannot eat. With that being said, it's time for us to get any scripts. Is y'all ready? Yes.